Hello again, this time in our transformation geometry lesson, we are doing enlargements or compressions. Okay, now I suppose the name itself gives it away a little bit, so I'll jump right into it now. The best way, I think at least, of explaining this is to first look at the transformation rule for an enlargement or a compression. So I'm going to say enlarge by factor k okay so that this would look like that k multiplies the x coordinate and k multiplies the y coordinate now in this case we are going to assume k is greater than zero so for now let's just keep k as a positive value so that it is literally only multiplying x by making it a larger number or y by making it a larger number it's not equal to zero so if it was equal to zero it will just all of the coordinates will be just become zero zero so it's larger than zero and each coordinate gets multiplied by that so let me uh, do a basic example okay a basic example would be something like tx comma y enlarge enlarge by factor k gives us oh, let's make that factor 2 sorry it's an example by factor 2 2x comma 2y there's a basic example what does this enlargement do well it literally doubles each coordinate so the coordinate 1 comma 1 will become under this transformation 2 comma 2 the coordinate uh, let's make it uh, one one how about a half comma two becomes two times a half is one two times two becomes four okay uh, the coordinate one comma two becomes two because two times one is two and two times two is four okay so let's see what would this have looked like if i was actually drawing it if i was actually drawing this figure okay uh let's do let's say that's one that's two three four uh, why must actually also go up to four and here's one two three four then the first coordinate let's draw the original one was one comma one so that's there okay a half comma two there's a half here comma two and one comma two that's there there's the original three coordinates that makes a triangle so three coordinates will give us a triangle okay I apologize no, no. Not very good at this drawing on here. So there's our triangle, the original triangle. Now under this enlargement by a factor of two, each coordinate gets multiplied with a two. So now this coordinate, let me color coordinate it. That one comma one now becomes two comma two. So this is the new coordinate. The coordinate a half two becomes one. As uh, one four, so one four up there. Okay, there's the yellow coordinate. Okay, the coordinate one two becomes two four. There's that coordinate. And uh, now, if we draw this one in, let's do it in red. If I if I draw this triangle, you'll notice something that that even though each side length has been doubled for example you can see this side length here was a half that side length there was one unit and this would be one plus a half whatever that equals to I'm not going to do Pythagoras just now but now this side length is now two units this side length is now one unit so the side lengths have doubled but there's something we have to keep in mind when when all of the side length is doubled it doesn't mean the area is twice as large okay the one thing that you'll notice here is that you can if you work out this one's area 
Okay. Compared to that one's area, okay. the one thing that you'll notice is that the relationship between these this these two areas is let's call this one area uh, red area red and this one area magenta okay then you'll see that area the area red is four times the area of magenta so what does that mean that means that I can fit four of these triangles into that that larger triangle. Now, why four? Will it always be four? No. Where did the four come from? The four comes from the two that is being squared. Okay. If I had a square, there's my square, and I doubled each side length, so that's one one. My, I will now have a two by two. Okay. So because I'm multiplying that one with two and that one with two. I'm multiplying two in two dimensions in two dimensional the two dimensional measure in other words the area will have increased with two times two with two squared so that's a very common question is what has happened to the area even though each side length has been doubled the area has been quadrupled okay what about halving the size of this thing, halving each side. So for example now I want to make my uh, transformation rule as follows. Okay, Tx comma y. Now a compression of factor 2. A compression of factor 2. So now everything is halved. Okay, so now this is what it looks like. A half x comma a half y. Okay, so I'm compressing with a factor of two, which means I'm dividing everything with two. I just want to show you something something interesting. What happens if I connect? I'm going to try and do that now. But, uh, this with the center. This should be a straight line there. Okay, even though I'm not working with a ruler on here, this should be a straight line through there. And this should be a straight line through there. Then one thing that you'll see is if I, if this was my original, this is my object. That's my object, and this is my image. One other way I could have done this was to simply take this distance and double it on that side. If it was three times, I would measure this and and extend this line three times further measure this extended three times further in this case it's just twice as uh, I'm doing an enlargement by factor two so this distance here and that distance there is the same so I've got double the distance from the origin double the distance from the origin double the distance from the origin okay so if I am reducing it or compressing it by a factor of two I'm halving this distance so this point here will now come to half the distance be on this line uh, let me do it in yellow to stick with that color coordinate. Okay, so I'm doing half the distance. Okay, that point there okay, comes to half the distance, which is there. Okay, this point here from the origin, half the distance from the origin would be somewhere there. And now let's do that one in green. There's my reduced triangle okay there's my compressed image okay so it's again an image because this was the original and this is the transformation image and what would this one's what would area of green be compared to the area of magenta well it's smaller of course and each side length this time has been halved so it will be a half times a half because we're working in two dimensions so we have to take both dimensions uh, compression into consideration okay so that would be a half squared which is a quarter of area magenta okay
there we go it's a quarteravaria magenta so one thing I would like to mention at this point is that I suppose what you should notice is that the one difference between an enlargement and compressions compared to the other transformations that we did is that the shape or the size of the object has changed now in this case the shape has not changed it still looks like the same shape if however I were to do something like this I were to say TX comma Y is equal to uh, not equal to is transforming the point X Y to 2 X comma Y if this is my transformation rule notice how only the horizontal uh, coordinate is being doubled so what this is going to do to this object is, is is create a new object that's going to look like this it's going to double this object to look like like this from there to there this one is also doubled okay so what you might notice, I don't know if my sketch is good enough to show that, but this sketch is, or this shape has been stretched vertically, uh, horizontally I mean. It's been stretched horizontally because only the horizontal uh, coordinate was multiplied with a factor. And it hasn't been stretched vertically by that same factor. So, in fact, the shape has changed. Now, in a normal enlargement or compression, the shape doesn't change, but the size does change. Whenever that happens, we call such transformation a non-rigid transformation. A non-rigid transformation. Now, what is a non-rigid transformation? Well, it's a transformation that's not rigid. Okay. <laughs> Does that make sense? Well, let's look at what is a rigid transformation. A rigid transformation. That's, that's most of the transformations we've done up to this point, except for enlargements and compressions. Size and shape is preserved. Preserved. Okay, so for example, if I have done a translation of this shape, that shape is just somewhere else on the graph, but it still has the same shape. Okay, if I do a reflection of a shape, okay, and if I reflect that in the x axis, okay. I still have the same shape even though it looks upside down now okay it's still the same shape in uh, in shape and in size so these are two rigid transformations but if I do make an enlargement or a compression of either of these two shapes then that is indeed a non-rigid transformation because we have changed the size so, rigid transformation, size and shape, uh, I suppose that should be R, size and shape are preserved, while non-rigid transformation would be that either size or shape was not preserved. Cool, that's it for uh, this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll look at rotations around the origin. Okay, basic rotations around the origin. What do you think, rigid or non-rigid? Let's find out in the next lesson.